Hello, my name is The Rook, and today I'm going to be walking you through the Playing Tecmo Super Bowl Online for Dummies for the PC guide that can be found on the TecmoBowl.org forums. I'm going to walk you through the process of someone else hosting a game and you joining it. Then I'm going to be walking you through the process of you hosting a game and someone joining you. And then the process of using our server to host a game so that you and an air player can go up against each other. Let's begin. Step one, you download the emulator and ROM through the links that are provided here. I have already gone ahead and done that. And it comes in a nice little zip folder. Once you have the zip folder, you're going to need to extract it. The information here outlines how to do that if you have never extracted any files through zip before. I've gone ahead and already extracted that. Here are the files. Now, as this will be your first time using the emulator and ROM, you're going to need to set up and map your controls. Let me launch the thing here. Now, I've already used this thing before and map my controls, so I'm just going to give you an overview of how I did that briefly. The guide in the background outlines it. For me, I have an actual USB NES controller. You need to, for player one, which is pad one, map out what is going to make them move left. So for the player to move left, the button that hit that is here must be pressed. To select a new button, you double click on this. That'll start a timer. You hit the button either on your USB controller or on keyboard and that will put that button written in here and the cursor will advance down to the next one and then you just keep on doing it for each key until you have everything mapped out and then you can actually save them by hitting OK. Once you have your controller and everything mapped out through the process outlined, you need to set your path. The path information can be found underneath options. You go to paths. Now the paths you want here need to line up with the information you have here. Give me a second here. Let me move this over a little bit more for better representation. The actual file path and folder here matches up with the file path and folder I have here. You basically have that set up for each of the all the information here so that the images and save data are saved correctly and are easily accessible by the emulator and ROM. Once you have them all outlined, you need to press OK. Now once you have that all figured out, your emulator will be set up and it's time to start setting up the whole playing online experience. Now in the first example, this is someone else hosting a game and you're joining them. You can talk to them and meet that individual via the Discord. Information here outlines how to get to the Discord and see everything. I've already gotten there. This is the Discord itself. There is a channel that's called Looking for Game. Here the MeSeeks box outlines how you can use some commands to actually tell people you are looking for a game. When a person is looking for their game it will say something fancy here saying that they are looking for someone to play with them and hopefully that someone will join them and accept the whole proposal through the commands outlined here. If the person gets tired of waiting or just has to go somewhere they can also use the commands outlined in this forum to leave the little waiting for game set up. Once you've talked to someone and uh, figured out who's going to host, who's going to be like player one, player two, you figure out who's going to do what and discuss things like matchups and so forth, they're going to give you IP information. They're going to basically send you a message directly because you don't want to put your IP information out in the open for everyone. They'll send you a message directly and they'll appear in your listings here and they'll send you some IP information and you can join the thing there. Let me see here. Where did I get some IP information from someone previously? Now he joined me. I think I joined Tapper when I played him. That's right. He gave me his IP here. 
And now what I did was I went to Netplay and I hit Connect. Now from here you're going to need to add your Tecmo Super Bowl game which is outlined in this part of the guide. You go to Add. This will take you to the path of the folders you set up earlier with paths. You find your game, you select it, and it will appear up here. Once you have that selected, you go to Launch. This brings up the menu here. Now as we're playing on peer-to-peer, -peer, that is the one we want. You put the nickname of the person you want to connect to. Then you put in the port, which is the standard port for our use, is 6996. You put in the IP information that they gave you that will end in 6996. Now, as you are connecting to them, you hit connect. It will say uh, connection requested, connection confirmed. And then, whichever one of you is first player, goes to change game and from here you can select the uh, the uh, emulate you can select the ROM for the emulator and then it will ask if each person is ready you each check mark ready as I'm currently not playing with the emulator so there's no game selected but once you all check mark ready the game will actually load and begin that is if someone else is hosting and you are joining them if you are the one hosting you of course put your name here, you put the same port, and you put your IP here. To find out what your IP is, you can use ipconfig or you can go to the Tecmo World uh, Tecmo World Players Circuit and get your IP from there. And you can put the IP there along with the standard port. Now sometimes when you're hosting you gotta set port forwarding. That is outlined in the next stage of the guide as the first section is someone else hosting and you joining and the next section is you hosting. For port forwarding you need to get the IP address of your router which is usually different per router. Here's a brief outline of some popular routers. My router happens to be a UB and as it's not outlined here I basically had to go downstairs and find where it is and the IP information was written on it as well as the username and password information. Some people it's admin, some people it's actually user and so forth. But once you actually have that figured out, you should be able to log into your own personal router. Something else you're going to need to do is go to IP config. IP config can also be used to figure out some of your router information. For example, this is my router that we'll be going to later on. Here is the IP information for it and that same information is listed in here for the IP config. Now pending on your router it might be called port forwarding, it might be called port triggering, there's various different ways in which it can be called. Once you've logged into your router and it's asked you for username and password, you put in the username and password and then you'll go to an interface like this. This is how the UB routers look and for some other systems the router user interface may look like this. It's going to be different for everything depending on what you are using. Now once you have the IP config information here, you're going to use that to set the port forwarding. Now, as you can see, I put in, actually I guess I can just remove it all and create it again to make it simpler. I'm just going to screenshot that in case I lose it so I don't forget anything. Actually, I'll just recreate it itself without deleting the old one. You go in here, you find out your computer's IP, IPv address 4, there it is. You put that in the local IP, you put in the 6996, you put in 6996 again, you put in the external start port, which is again 6996, this will, setting all these values will automatically set this value. The protocol you should set is both, and then description, you can call it anything, I've called it Tecmo, for example, and you need to actually enable it 
before you hit apply. Once that happens, you'll actually see it appear down here. At least that's how it works with my router. In order to get to this menu, as you can see here, I went to once I was logged into the UB router that I have, I went to advanced, then I went to forwarding. Depending on your router, it may be forwarding, triggering. There's a lot of different ways it can be referred to here, and some outlines of how they work based on your router can be found here. Okay. Once I have the port forwarding set up, I can host the game. And just like before, peer to peer setup, I've got the nickname I want to call myself. I've got 6996, I've got my IP, and I've got the port. Make sure you send this information to whoever you've met on the Discord and just told them to play a game with you. And once you've sent them that information, they can put that into their information here. They will be hit and connect, but because you are now hosting, you'll hit new game. The same thing will appear here. We'll say connection request, connection confirmed. Whoever is being first player hits change a game again, and they use that to select the game, and then each player readies up, and you're good to go. The last one I'm going to show you is the process in which you use the server itself as like a third party for hosting things. Now instead of using the peer-to-peer -peer version of the box here, you need to use the Calarera. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm going to call it Calaria, Calarera, whatever. You switch to that one, and that goes to the actual server. You put in the IP information of the actual server. Here's an example of what it is. A, another player gave it to me when I was playing him online on the server. You put that information into here. You want to select excellent 30 PPS as outlined here. You can put whatever you want here in the nickname thing to call yourself. And then you hit once you have all that information and the, let me put in the IP information he gave me and the port, you hit connect. This brings you to a little menu here. Things will connect through things when the server is working. Your name will appear here. As well as anyone else's name that is using the site. You basically discuss things on who's going to be player one. Whoever is player one, they hit new game. They select the game that they'll be using for Tecmo Super Bowl Player Circuit, Tap Meter, for example. Currently, the server's not working right, so this information is going to be a bit erroneous. But once you have selected the game and it is actually working on the server, the information will appear here. It will say the game, it will say the emulator information, it will say the owner, which will be you, assuming you are first player and hit new game, and it will show the ping and player information, and someone will, as listed here, if they, when, when they join you, they are going to double click the game, and that will allow them to join them, and then things can get going. The person who hits new game is player one, and the person that double clicked on the game listed here is player two. It is usually a good idea to discuss the game, first player, second player, before things get started, or what you can sometimes do, what some players do to figure out who's going to be playing as what, is they will just start a little quick practice game and then do a soft reset. When they do a quick practice game, they just go into these settings and just go with Bills versus Colts. And they say whoever wins the coin toss between the Bills or Colts decides who's first player and second player. Like I can say that I'm going to be first player, you be, se well, I'm going to be Bills, you be Colts, and if the Bills win the coin toss, I'm player one. If the Colts win the coin toss, the then you're player one. 
In this example, you have won the coin toss, so you now have the option of being player one. Once the coin toss is decided who is player one and who is player two, you just go into soft reset. You may need to end the game if you are not already set up as player one and player two. But once the game is set up correctly and things are figured out, you should be able to join each other's games and play things as outlined by the earlier steps. I hope you have enjoyed this guide, and I hope you have a nice day.